Hey, welcome back to lesson number two. We're going to have another classroom joining us, uh, Mrs. Sasha's class. So you're probably going to be watching this with us. We're kind of teaming up doing the, the same math lessons. So uh, today we're going to share a video on those iReady lessons you've been working on. So we already had a little intro video and hopefully you've worked on or finished the first lesson and are ready to go to the second. So I'm just going to review a little bit of what hopefully came out of lesson one. All right. So we were talking about exponents and where we had a base. In this case, we have a base of four and an exponent of three. And over here, we have a base of four again and an exponent of two. Now, if you have two things multiplied that have the same base, you can combine them. So we can expand this out the long way, uh, which would be four times four times four for the first one, which is four to the third. And then that is times four times, oh, I ran out of room. That's okay. Four squared. Okay, now if you look up there, there are six of those. I lied. There are only, forgot a four, there are only five of them, okay? So when you expand this out, you're going to have four times itself five times. Now, the rule that they hopefully, uh, that you learned was you can take this and say, okay, that is four to the three plus two power or four to the fifth. So you don't have to expand it out. Um, it especially as the numbers get big, you're not gonna to wanna to do that. So rule number one is if you have the same base and you multiply them, you can just add the exponents. And as you work through lesson one, you should uh, have seen that rule. Okay, second rule is when we talk about power to a power. So let's say we have four to the third, but we have that whole thing to the second power. And we call that power to a power because you're taking this third power to another power. Okay, so we're going to expand this one out a little bit. So in this case, we're going to have 4 to the 3rd times 4 to the 3rd. Now, we can use rule 1, and when we have a multiplication, we can just add them. But I want to go ahead and expand this out. So 4 to the 3rd over here is 4 times 4 times 4. And this one over here is another 4 times 4 times 4. So you have these two, and they are times each other. Now, if you look, you have four times itself six times. So the answer to this is four to the sixth. So if we go back and look up here, we have three to the second power. Okay, so three to the second power, all we need to do is multiply those, because we're going to have two of those. So it would be four to the three times two okay so you multiply power to a power you multiply and if you're just multiplying you would add all right those are the two rules uh they're easy to confuse i always look at it like this a power to a power is going to be bigger and multiplication is going to be your bigger answer so it's kind of an easier way to remember it uh sometimes these get confused um, do I add or do I multiply remember power to a power is a lot of power so uh you are going to do the multiplication all right so that was lesson one. Now, let me get this erased. Lesson two is a little more confusing for a lot of students. We start talking about division. So first of all, they start talking about this concept of negative exponents. So let's look at that. So again, we're going to use four as our base. It works with any base. Now let's say it's to the negative two power. Now that is not negative eight. <laughs> it is not 16 with a negative sign in front of it. Negative 16, common you know, guesses, but wrong. Uh, this negative exponent really means that you take that whole thing, and what I refer to it is you put it down in the basement right there, and it, it makes it a denominator, a division, okay? So down here, if you have a negative exponent, write it in a fraction with it on the bottom, okay? So this is one over four squared, which would be 1 over 16, final answer, okay? So let's try another one of those, look at it real quick. Let's say I have 6 to the negative 3 power, okay? So that is, remember that negative 3 takes it downstairs, 
So we have 6 times 6 times 6. And we have a 1 up there. Because it is a fraction. All right. And that would be, you could write that as 1 over 6 to the third. Woo! Or you could do that multiplication out, which is, uh, I don't know, 196, I think. Check my math. Not quite sure. 6 times 6 times 6. Okay. Um, and you can go from there. Okay. Uh, all right. With that said, those are the two rules for negative exponents. Okay. So then they started looking at, okay, division, which really helps that we have our negative exponent or this fractional thing idea. Okay. So if we're going to divide something, let's say we have five to the fifth divided by five squared. Okay, first of all, to be able to divide, you need to, or to simplify it, they have to be the same base. In this case, they're both fives. So we can combine these. All right, so we're gonna write this out and it really helps a lot of you are fraction phobic, you don't like fractions. Well, the fraction part actually helps to understand what's going on here and it gives you the visual. So we're gonna write this division as a fraction. So we have five to the fifth divided by five squared, okay? Or you can look at it over five squared. So let's expand this a little bit. Now five to the fifth, it is kind of big. There's gonna be five of those. Let's see, am I gonna run out of room? One, two, three, four, one more. And five. All right, that is the top, expand it out. The bottom expanded out much shorter, five, times 5 because the exponent is only 2. Now if we look at this, first of all, when we look at this whole thing, 5 over 5 is just 1. Okay, so these two can cancel each other and become a 1, which is really nice. So we're going to start canceling these uh, one for one here. So that one cancels with that one, and that one cancels with that one. We don't have anything left on the bottom but a 1, okay? And over here we have 1, 2, 3, fives left. So we have 5 times 5 times 5 over 1, okay? And the other way to write 5 times 5 times 5 is 5 to the third over 1. Now anything over 1, we can just write it without the one underneath it, okay? Now, when we have that, if we look back where we started and where we ended up, so if you look at this, that five and that two ends up a three. So we can simply, because what we're doing is we're subtracting the bottom ones off of the top by canceling. So the rule here is that you can take this original problem up here and you can say that's equal to five to the five minus two power, which gives us five to the third. So a lot shorter than having to write it out the long way. So remember, at multiplication, we added those two exponents, right? When this was multiplication, we added the two exponents. In division, which is the opposite of multiplication, we subtract them. So it is five to the third. Okay, so let me give you another example problem real quick. This time we're gonna do the shortcut method, not expand it out, as hopefully you like shortcuts, I do. So let's say we have a base of seven, and we are gonna say seven to the eighth, divided by seven to the sixth. Now, if you think about this, we would have six sevens on the bottom, eight on the top, and if they started canceling, we're gonna be left with two upstairs. So we can say this is 7 to the 8 minus 6 power, which equals 7 squared. Now 7 squared is 7 times 7, which is 49. All done. Okay, so that actually works pretty slick and easy. Okay, and then we start having some where they start combining some of the, all the rules together. So let's do a couple of those harder examples. And you'll see this in the lesson and then at the quiz at the end. All right, so let's take something like, uh, we're going to use 3 as a base. 3 is nice and easy. 3 squared to the third power divided by uh, 
3 to the 4th power. Whew. Okay. So we just start here. Uh, we're going to, let's, let's simplify this. Remember, power to a power, we multiply. So this one becomes 3 to the 6th divided by 3 to the 4th. Now, remember, division we can subtract. So this is 3 to the 6 minus 4, which equals 3 squared. And if you want to get rid of the exponent, it is 9. All right, take a second to look at that. So they like to do all kinds of weird stuff like that. So let's take one that's a little, looks really kind of funny. It works the same. All the rules apply. My last example for you. Let's say we have uh, 5 squared divided by 5 to the 6th. Hmm. So, wow, this one is going to be different. So I'm going to do it two ways for you, okay? First of all, remember, division we can subtract, right? So this should equal 5 to the 2 minus 6. Now, you guys are good at negative positive numbers. 2 minus 6 is not 4, right? It is negative 4. So this equals 5 to the negative 4 power. Okay, now that looks funny, but when I do it the other way, I think you're going to see what's going on here. So if I take that, I've got 5 squared over 5 to the 6. I'm going to expand that out so you can see what's going on. There's my 5 squared. And on the bottom, I've got... I've got, I'm going to just do them like this and put the time sign in in a second because it's easier on a whiteboard. One, two, three, four, five. One more. That is a lot of fives and messy plus signs. Okay, wow. Now, cancellation game. All right, that one cancels, that one cancels. There is no more on top, but remember when they all cancel, they cancel to one. So I have one over five times five times five times five. There's four of them, which equals one over five to the fourth. Now, just like when we had a negative exponent, it took it down below. You can take it out of the bottom and say, well, that is just equal to five to the negative four. Same thing we got, shortcut rule, this is why it works, okay? So using those two skills, that should get you through lesson two, and we'd like you to take the quiz at the end and just, just kind of to check to see your understanding. It'll give us a gauge kind of where we're at. We've already talked about it. We're gonna review this uh, these skills individually and have some really short little worksheets for you next week that don't mix the skills uh, all together and kind of break it down into individual ones. The, these two lessons cover four concepts all uh, together that sometimes get confused with each other. So next week's all about having some more practice with this. So thanks for playing, and we will be back. I'm going to turn you off right